In this video by Cadre, we're showing the uh, Shining 3D Intraoral Scanner that has uh, come to market recently in 2020, early 2019. Uh, what's imperative to understand about this uh, camera, this uh, scanning system, is that it's got a projector and a single camera. So if you use other scanners or if you're new to scanning, you have to angle it and position it a little bit differently than uh, other scanners. Uh, namely, you have to uh, uh, angle the camera in such a manner to pick up uh, areas, particularly the mesials of, uh, of preparations in certain areas where the camera can't see from a just a direct vision. So it's just a little bit of practice, a little bit of experience, you can master that. So we're watching here is a live uh, recording of, uh, of a uh, first molar that I'm uh, scanning. Uh, with the uh, shiny scanner and I'm going at a very slow pace just for a new user or somebody who's considering getting the uh, shiny scanner. Uh, so whenever the, uh, the uh, middle box is green is when you're actively scanning and then if you go too fast or get past a certain area uh, you have the guidance on the uh, upper left corner that'll tell you to slow down or go back to a position that it recognizes it can uh, continue scanning. Now uh, with all scanners, what's important is that you uh, displace the lips, you displace the tongue. Here I've got the optra gate in, I've got uh, um, isolite in place, and uh, it's very easy to image all that, uh, any area, any quadrant, when you have all those areas nicely uh, isolated. So I'm going here uh, deliberately very slow so a, a new user can uh, appreciate the pace it can go with. Uh, and here's what I'm talking about at the mesial. Uh, those areas, uh, technically, they're clinically insignificant. They, you don't really need uh, areas that are undercut, areas that are uh, irrelevant to the fit of the restoration. Obviously, if there's any voids or any holes on the uh, contact areas or in the margins, you want to fill them in. But here, right on the mesial, we've got an undercut. I'm going to stop the camera, and we're going to go focus and take a look uh, to... Uh, uh, focus on that area. I just changed the, the texture of the model and you can see anything that's gray is where we have missing data. Now you need to judge whether that's critical or not and deliberately I chose this case to emphasize this. That's an area that's an undercut. Uh, what happens in a lab or if you're designing this yourself, that area will be automatically filled in with a lot of uh, basically any CAT software that's on the market. So it's not necessary for you to pick it up. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my angle. I'm gonna change a mode. The Shining has a mode for metal scanning. And just by uh, altering the settings of the camera and having a different approach, I can pick up that area that I couldn't under a particular setting. So as you get to going with the scanner, you understand how it works. You'll be toggling between the different camera settings and you'll be able to pick up that area that was um, uh, missing some information. So you can see now in this uh, in this mode, in this texture mode, we can see how the um, undercut uh, area was filled in. So as you get going and you're uh, more advanced, you will appreciate what is necessary data and what is unnecessary, what you need to pick up um, and what the design software will ignore. So it can speed things uh, up quite a bit for you. So with the eyesight in place, again, I've done no editing. You can see how long this takes. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and scan the lower arch. Uh, here, we're not scanning any margins. We're not scanning anything of uh, importance. So uh, we just want the occlusal surface and the buccal surface. Generally, I just scan those areas. You don't even need to capture the lingual. But uh, what I'm trying to show is how if you properly um, displace the tongue or properly displace the uh, the lips, uh, you can greatly enhance the uh, image capture of any intraoral scanner. So here I'm rolling over to the occlusal surface. Now I'm displacing the tongue with the isolite and um, I'm uh, trying to access the lingual. Again, this is clinically insignificant information uh, for the design of this restoration, but I'm uh, trying to demonstrate how you can easily capture that by uh, having the proper angulation or having the proper access uh, to capture that data. So uh, you'll see the holes in the distal of that uh, first molar. It's actually a retained uh, uh, primary molar. And uh, again, just from different angles, you want to make sure the camera is able to see uh, those certain um, uh, positions or certain anatomy in the tooth. And, uh, 
uh, it'll readily pick it up. So once you've uh, stop the uh, camera from scanning you'll get an indication from the software where you have some uh, missing data or some voids and you can decide to ignore it and have the software automatically fill it in or you can uh, um, take the time to fill that uh, information in yourself by holding camera from a different angle so uh, I'm going purposely very slow or, uh, an advanced user will skip a lot of this extra information I'm trying to pick up I'm just trying to introduce this to a new user who's uh, getting into digital dentistry with the uh, uh, shining camera and the shining software so that was the upper jaw this is the lower jaw if you see I've already got articulating paper marks uh, on the uh, uh, upper jaw and the lower jaw that can help us uh, verify that our our physical occlusal stamps match what uh, we get in the occlusion, occlusion window. So uh, we're going to capture the bite now and make sure we got enough clearance. We're going to have the patient bite down and retract their uh, tongue uh, to the back of the mouth and displace it. And as soon as the software recognizes uh, the upper jaw and the lower jaw, it can easily uh, merge them together and mount them at the right vertical uh, dimension. So this step, when uh, you're finished, you can uh, stop the process and uh, uh, have the software fabricator uh, uh, render the models. So again, as a quick review, here's the uh, upper jaw. Let's zoom in. You can see how photorealistic the uh, scans are. You can see the margins very clearly. Um, then what you can do if you choose to is you can go ahead and set the models in the proper dimension on the arch form. You can have them, uh, uh, the, the more properly you uh, align the uh, preparation and the lower jaw at this window, the better proposal you're gonna get in the CAD software. So you can do this yourself or you can uh, pass that on to the laboratory or if you're designing it yourself chair side. Uh, if you do this correctly, you'll get much better initial proposals. Uh, so from here, well, what we can do is uh, go to the next step, and again, it's up to you. If you want to do this part, you can uh, select the, the tooth number, 1-6. Uh, uh, I personally like to use international standard uh, for numbering teeth. It makes more sense to me than the U.S. version. But anyway, we've identified the upper first right molar, and then we start plotting those margins. Uh, once you've got the margins plotted, you can uh, double-click and walk along. Uh, those margins and identify them and move those uh, green spheres into the right uh, location, into the right spots, and uh, that would define where your margin is. So all this information can be relayed over to the laboratory for design in CAD software uh, where they uh, ha have the margins uh, pre-marked by you and then they can make any corrections if they need to or they can uh, um, accept what you've drawn and uh, go from there. So if you get a little bit too aggressive or, or too quick with a, a double click, you'll see how um, you can introduce um, uh, uh, a alignment doubles up uh, on itself. Uh, very easy to correct, very intuitive, and I'm going deliberately very slow as an introductory uh, video for somebody who's never scanned before or is starting to look at uh, um, the shining camera and getting into uh, digital dentistry. So uh, this is the best part. As the clinician, you can see right away um, where your margins are. You can define them if you need to touch them up and isolate them and get better uh, retraction. You can do that as well. There are some uh, uh, other features in the software that you can utilize uh, to your liking and then you can uh, upload that to uh, a lab or you can launch your own version of CAD that's uh, linked to this software. So you have quite a few features. You can check the occlusion if you wanted to, check the uh, uh, see if those uh, stamps match your physical ones and the, the articulating paper and uh, once you're finished with that you can send that up to the cloud or process the case um, and uh, start with the design. So some doctors will, uh, will send this to the lab and never touch it other doctors may have CAD software like I do here. I've got it linked to ExaCAD, and here's what I mean. There's the model that came through. The orange line represents that uh, green line that we use to demarcate the margins in the uh, Shining software. So now in the CAD software, you can go ahead and finish the design of this uh, class.